Hello everybody, today I'm going to be doing a different type of video. Um, my kitchen space, well my dining room space, is filled to the brim with plants and I need to make some room in here. I No one ever eats at my kitchen table, so let me show you what I've got work, what I'm working with here. So this, as you can see, is the is the dining room. I have got, nobody ever eats at my table. Uh, it's usually just a plant stand at this point. So what I'm going to do is, um, let me show you over here. Um, over here, I've got this, I've got these plants right here. On this, uh, trunk. So I'm going to move all of this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to move all of that, um, but also move my table and just move things around so I can utilize the table for more plants because I've got them everywhere. Um, this plant here is not mine. Um, Mark's um, boss from his job sent a half dead topiary back to me uh, or to me to fix um the problem was that his pot didn't have drainage okay so when you get pots like this um, plastic pots the best thing that you can do if you don't have a drill the thing that i do all the time and it works perfectly is on the thickest parts of the pot um so right here it's usually got the outer rim is thicker. All you do is take a nail and hammer it through the bottom and it will create drainage holes and you do it, you do four of them because they're small. So you do four and you don't ever want to have a, a plant sitting in a pot without drainage because it's going to drown and you're going to think it's going to keep needing water because it's wilting. Um, but really it's not, the soil is just sitting, I mean, the water that you're putting in is just sitting at the base of that soil and it's like causing it to rot, the plant to rot. And I've killed a few plants or I've almost killed a few plants and have killed a few that way through process of, you know, trial and error and learning how to um, care for plants the right way. Things like croton. I have killed two crotons in my day. Um, you'll see them at the store. They're the ones with the long uh, leaves and they're like, they have uh, margins of like red and yellow and orange on them. Uh, so that plant is not mine. That is going back to the dealership where Mark works, but it is heavy. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to keep you guys right over here so you can see what I'm doing. And... See this is the, this right here. I had to get this soil acidifier because I do have hydrangeas planted in the back. And if you want your hydrangeas to be blue, you have to have high acidic soil. Um, you can get one of these off of Amazon and stick it in your ground, and it will tell you if you've got acidic or alkaline soil. And if you've got high alkaline soil, like I do, you'll have to add some of this in there to break it up. prepare it. So I'm going to have to clean all of this stuff off. This here, I'm using this plant. This coleus looks just terrible. But what I'm using this plant for is to grow cuttings, basically. So you'll see here, if you cut a coleus, it's like mint. Uh, it will sprout out two stronger stems from each side. So you can make a lot of cuttings from this. And then on the bottom, we have some Swedish Ivy that I also use for cuttings. Now, pull these chairs away. And I'll have to put all these plants over here. This is a, this one here, she's a finicky one. This is a Rex begonia. I've almost killed this plant several times. 
but I finally figured out the formula formula of what she likes, so she's doing better now. beauty with this uh, trunk is I can just move all the plants at once. So let me show you what um, I have on the trunk here. Plant one. So on the trunk I have got a donkey tail sedum. Uh, another Rex begonia. I've got a elephant bush, some um, African violets. I put this African violet. You'll see the the plants I put in the greenhouse. They suffered hardcore. Um, I put it in too much sunlight, and look at it. It's just leaves were burnt, but it, she's coming back to life. So we've got uh, this Dracaena. It's a spotted Dracaena. It's grown quite big. And then we've got two types of coleus here in this pot. We've got the lime coleus and like this heavily purple kind. So that's the trunk. Now over here, you can see that that trunk has been there for a couple years maybe. Ever since I bought it, and then I just put it right there. And then over here, you could see the golden pothos has branched out significantly. Um, it really likes this spot right here. And then I've got another little pot of uh, donkey tail sedum. I put my prayer plant in the greenhouse, and uh, it just hates me for it. Look at it poor thing it was thriving in there until it got cold and then as soon as it got cold it just withered so we'll fix it though and then we've got this uh, African violet more African violets over there we've got the creeping Jenny look at their Oliver's outside so and then here we've got this Dracaena that I repotted just the other day. I repotted it from right here. I had these two Dracaenas in here with this uh, base of Swedish Ivy. I don't know, I really like the way that looks. Just the, the dual textures of the plants. I don't know, it looks really interesting. It actually looks way better from this angle. So like when you're sitting in the living room, see that's what you see. I think it just looks really cool. And then here we've got my uh, Deffenbacca, which is, uh, she needs a bigger pot because her base leaves are starting to yellow pretty heavily, as you can see back there. But, and then as you can see on this shelf, I have got my Lucky Bamboo, some more coleus, um, this ficus, variegated ficus tree. This is a flamethrower coleus. And then my fiddle leaf fig. Look how tall this fiddle leaf fig is. So when I bought this fig, it was about right here. You can see actually the new growth. The new growth leaves are a lot bigger and more green. Um, more of a bright green than the old growth. And then last night, I bought this cordyline. Uh, the cool thing about these cordylines is they're usually usually sold with three plants in them. This was five dollars at Lowe's. Um, they also had these plants, which is a uh, nope, you can't see it. Those plants here. It's a Phoenix Robolini, and if you this this plant is a really resilient plant, and it will like put up with a lot of abuse, so you don't have to like look after it so intensely, but. Let me get all of my chemicals, not chemicals, my foods. Oh, 
Okay, a lot of stuff back here that I gotta get out and then move. Let me move this. Actually, let me move you guys closer so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so back here is what I'm focusing on. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm gonna move. So my success with my plants are mostly due to me feeding them. Uh, succulent food, uh, blooming houseplant food, general food, and orchid food. Um, that's been my success this year and what I've done differently as opposed to years prior. I didn't add anything to anything. I didn't feed anything. I didn't do any of that years prior. And my garden was never as successful as it was this year, nor were my house plants as beautiful. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna push this whole table back. Um, I'm gonna push the whole table back against the wall and then I'm gonna use it as just a big plant stand because that's all it is. Nobody sits at it and it kind of, um, to be honest, just takes up space. So I'm gonna move these plants over here, move this table out. So I can use these little tables at other places. this oh lots of stuff here guys got to be really careful oh I'm moving things I know this isn't the best shot of what I'm doing but I just want to show you guys I'm a big fan of um, rearranging your space when it feels stagnant uh, the benefits of it are actually astounding and it helps your mind just to um, open up creativity, creatively, creatively. <laughs> I don't know why I said that weird. Um, it helps your mind to open up when you go through your things and get rid of stuff and re rearrange things, rearrange your bedroom, rearrange your living room, just rearrange your spaces. I suggest doing it once a year. Um, it really helps if you're feeling in a creative rut, if you're feeling in a just a personal rut if you just feel uninspired and lacking in energy. Uh, move your space around. You know, create different little pockets where you can um, really enjoy and enhance uh, your home and your home life because that's what your home is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a sanctuary. It's supposed to be a reflection of your inner self. And if it's always cluttered and, you know, nothing seems to flow, if you have a lot of blocked spaces or <clears throat> um, things in the way, uh, it can really, it, your mind will mimic that same energy. So, you know, just be mindful of your spaces, guys. See, that already, that already looks like a hundred times better. The room looks bigger already. So let me put you guys over here so you can see how much bigger the room already looks. See, the room looks bigger already. Let's just a little bit more this way. And also this year what I'm doing is I'm changing my Christmas colors. So for the past, I don't know how many years, my Christmas colors were um, red and gold. So this year, I, actually just last night, I went and bought, I'm going to do blue and white and silver this year. Like a classy blue, not like that um, turquoise teal blue. So now what I've got to, <clears throat> figure out where to put is the rest of the stuff. Um, 
Actually, you know what would be cool is if I stacked the trunk on top of the table and kind of layer, you know, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? And took down this, uh, let's take that down. I'm going to take down that, uh, this thing here. This has been needing to come down for quite a while because he, uh, as you can see, it's just, you know, ran its course. And so that opens the space up pretty quickly as well. So that opened up the space pretty fast. Now, let me clean this off and then I will be back and show you guys what I'm gonna do. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. So now, let's start putting all the plants back up on them. And this way, it gives me just more room to put more plants up there because my space is limited. I'm like, like filling up. Um, as you can see, I've got, I mean, I've got plants all along the, in the windows. I got them behind me. They're just absolutely everywhere. So I'm going to set all of my plants back up and then I will show you guys what it's looking like. Okay guys, so this is what I've got so far. I think it looks so much better. Um, I took that big picture off the wall to let the plants kind of frame it. And like I said, this plant is not gonna be here. Probably tomorrow it'll be gone, so. Uh, and then the cordy line I just bought, I kept that. I don't have a, what's the step it? I don't have a pot big enough for that cordy line yet, so um, I've got to get another terracotta pot for her. But until then, I kind of just masked her with the um, golden pothos. So she's all, everything is looking uh, so much better. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it inspired you to move, uh, move some, some things around in your space and make things look different. And yeah, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.